In this Grasshopper tutorial, I will be demonstrating how to create an algorithm that produces random topography. And as you can see, there are all these input parameters which allow you to customize the topography to your needs. Now, just a moment as I let my Grasshopper catch up with me so that I can begin construction of this algorithm. Okay, so the first thing that I'm gonna want to do is um, disable this algorithm so it stops taking up my computer memory and start from scratch down here. So that what we want to begin with is a rectangular array of points. So I'll make a rectangular array and I will construct a point to feed into that array. Now the default cell has a width of 10 and a height of 5 so I want to give my own cell and to do that I'll just generate a rectangle nice and simply and by changing the width of this rectangle or the x size to four, for instance, I can change the spacing between these points to be four. And I'll plug this into x and y size in order to maintain um, an even distribution of these points. The next thing I'm gonna wanna do is feed in another number and I'll, I'll just plug in the same number to x and y for simplicity's sake. And for that reason, we're gonna be generating square terrain. And as you can see, this changes the number of points. So we'll call this resolution. And this is gonna be changing the number of points that we use to construct our surface. So it changes really the degree of control we have over the surface. And that's why I'm calling it the resolution. This, as you can see, just changes size. So I will call this scale. Now, the first thing we're gonna to wanna to do is add some randomness. So I'll add a random, node. What do we want to do? We want to randomly move these points. So I'll also add a move node. But you'll notice I can't just randomly move points. What I have to do is create random vectors that move those points. So I'll plug this randomness into a z vector and by inputting a number to a vector function I'm changing the size of that vector. And for the most part not much has changed yet because, well, first off, we have 100 uh, points to move and we're only feeding in one motion. So to fix that, the number of random numbers we want, which will change the number of vectors and therefore, thereby move every point, is going to be extracted using list length. This way, we have the same number of motions as we have points, and now you can see that's a little better, but we want to randomly move these points even more. So instead of generating numbers between zero and one, we can construct our own domain by inputting, for instance, 4.0 into this range. And now this range spans from zero to four. Great. And as you can see, we've got some nice randomness here. I'm gonna tone it down just a little bit. Now we can construct a a surface from these points. We'll just use surface from points, as intuitive as the name is. And so, how, so this is just a list of 100 points. And it, this node cannot make a surface just from a list of 100 points. It needs to know how many points are in the x direction. So if I plug in this u count to my resolution, now I know exactly how many points there are in that direction and I can create the surface. As you can see, interpolate is by default set to false, but if I set this to true, it distorts the surface even more to make sure it goes right through every point. I don't really care about interpolating, so I'm gonna set Boolean to false. And now you can see the points just pull on the surface. They seem to have a little bit of gravity to them. All right, so this is a nice surface but there's only one layer of noise or randomness, which makes it not very advantageous for simulating the real world, which has very broad layers of noise, which represent hills, and then much more fine layers of noise, which represent really texture on the ground. So actually the first thing I'm gonna to need to do is change this to amplitude one. And this will make sense once I add a second amplitude. 
because this is the first layer of noise. And really, this should be resolution one, not just resolution. Um, and so now we've got the hills. But to add the, the texture on the ground, we're going to want to divide the surface up into another layer of points and then move those randomly again, this time using a finer resolution and moving them less because we're working with smaller bumps. So to do this, we're going to want to use a bounding box. And from this box, we can extract some parameters. And we'll do that by deconstructing the box. Oops, deconstructing the box, not just deconstructing points. We want to deconstruct a box. And now you can see we have the space that this box takes up in the x direction, y direction, and z direction. And that's all we need to make our new grid of points. So we'll actually just construct a point. And we'll use this point construction to actually construct a bunch of points. And we'll do that by feeding in a range of x values and y values. And what, what do we want this the domain of this range to be? Well, we want our x values to span this gap that we've just extracted. So we'll just plug in this to here. And we'll plug in this to here. And then all we have to do is graft one of these inputs. And now, effectively, we're matching up each individual y coordinate with every single x coordinate. And that's how you make this grid of points. Um, I'm just going to preview off these boxes because they're obscuring my view a little bit. And I'm going to want to increase this resolution. So if I type in, for instance, 12 and label it resolution 2, then what I can do is adjust how many points are filling this space for the second time. I think 26 is about good, maybe even less. I don't want my algorithm to be running too slow for demonstration's sake. So I'm going to drag this resolution over to the beginning where I'm going to want to consolidate my inputs. And then we just have to project these points onto the surface. So I'll project these points in the z direction onto this surface that we generated previously. And as you can see, now these points exist on the surface. And I can preview off the points that aren't on the surface to clear up the viewport. All right. Um, once we have our new set of points that kind of follow the previous surface, we'll just randomly move those again. But actually, these points are grouped. We don't need these groupings. They'll just make our life more complicated. And to get rid of all groupings, to destroy groupings and place all the objects in just one group, we want to flatten. And now instead of having groups, we just have 441 values all in one group. And we'll do the same process to move these values randomly in the z direction. The only difference is that this time, we're going to want to randomly move them less far. But first, we need to use our list length node to make sure we're creating the right number of motions. And then I'll make a number slider that's by default maybe at 1.2. This will be the range of our motion. And now, if I take these points and I interpolate them into a new surface using surface from points, I'm going to have to plug in the U count, which is going to be this second resolution. And as you can see, it's not working. What's not working? The U count value is not valid for this amount of points. And this is actually very sensible. Because this time, when we were creating the points, we were using this range function. And if you plug in, for instance, what do we have here? 20 for the number of steps in this range. That means we're making 20 points in the x direction. But wait, 
21 locally defined values. And that's because 20 steps equates to 21 values. So instead of using this resolution directly, we're going to want to add one, x plus one. And now we've got the right number in the U count. And you can see our surface has become a little more distorted with finer grain noise. So now if I preview everything else off, but the surface we've just generated, it's really even better. I will take the surface and I will bake it into existence in Rhino. And just like that, we've created random topography. Um, now you can play around with, oops, I should have, I should drag this parameter to the front. You can play around with these inputs. And even if you want, repeat this process to layer more and more levels of noise on to increase the, the different levels, the number of levels of randomness. Um, I'm gonna change the name of this number slider to amplitude two. And um, this is the, the random topography, but stay tuned for the next two videos in this series to add color to this surface and to add trees. Thank you for watching. Please don't forget to like and subscribe to help the channel.